Today, we're going to talk about the used gear prices and the effect it's going to have long term, possibly on, well, playing guitar and acquiring such said gear. Welcome back to the Truck Driver Sean YouTube channel for uh, just this quick coffee break and for me to, well, run my mouth like an asshole, right? So, we're in a, we're in a very particular time and, um, you know, in just the world in general, but something that's just gets more infuriating and almost unacceptable is the gouging people are doing with used gear and some would say it's not gouging it's opportunity and people are taking the opportunity and they're making money from it and some people it's their side hustle come on man um, in my opinion a 225 dollar pedal will never be worth more than 225 dollars because the manufacturer themselves said eh, it's worth 225 dollars which is usually being sold for more than what it's actually worth so, um, yeah, so let's talk used cars. You can buy a brand new car for 45 grand, and two days later you want to get rid of it for another brand new car. So you go in for its trade-in value. You've put 120 miles on it. Now its trade-in value is 35,000. You lost 10,000, right? Yeah, use is used, folks. Okay, so let's take... We'll just use this because it's a good punching bag, right? This is an Ibanez TS9 that Mike Fortin had uh, figured out how to make sound a little bit more modern. I mean, it, the TS9 is old as shit. It's been around forever, right? And he found a way to make it a little more tailored to the modern player. It's $225 distributed by Godlike Distributors, right? Before the physical copy showed up, at people's houses the day they were getting sent out on reverb this popped up for five hundred dollars okay because they sold out now here's the funny thing about selling out and without screenshotting it and doing all that you just gotta take my word for it because i'm not really known as a liar right I had a conversation with Godlike because uh, they contacted me to thank me for doing the reviews that I'd done and kind of pointing some stuff out. And I thought it was really cool. Like, they took the time to actually, you know, do something more than send a thumbs up, which was really nice. Anytime a uh, person in the industry, when you're doing something with a product that they're involved with, reaches out to you, it, it's a big deal. You know, I know there's some guys that happens all the time, so it's not a big deal. But for me, it's a big deal. And... I really, I hold that stuff pretty close to my chest because I do this as a hobby. You know, this isn't my living. I drive a truck for a living, hence the truck driver Sean thing. And uh, the same fat body I can't seem to get rid of every time I get behind the goddamn wheel. Yeah, I've been on vacation for a week and I've lost 10 pounds. I've changed nothing. Trucking's killing me. All right? So anyway... It's a $229 pedal, and it was selling for $500. Now, yes, they're sold out right now. There's going to be more, folks, all right? God like themselves said, they get the next batch in. They're doing another run. It's They're going to do these runs as long as people want them to be done. It's just getting the physical pedals from Ibanez. That's kind of slowing things down a little bit. Which, obviously, China, supply chain, right? it's a thing. But there's more coming. Are you that impatient that you, as a consumer, will help drive these assholes charging $500 for a $229 pedal? Okay? You're part of the problem. Stop doing it. Get some patience. Why? Because when the ground floor falls through all this shit, you're going to be able to get this stuff for fucking nothing. All right? But you have to stop paying the insane amount of money 
that people want. Now let's talk about something that I want to get. I want to get an MI Audio Megalith Gamma. Why? I've just always wanted one and I thought it would sit really nice with this insane collection of amps that I have right now. All right. Brand new from MI Audio, they're $1,800. Now, granted, MI Audio are not really um, easy to deal with, okay? They're actually horrible to deal with. No idea why. Maybe it's because they're Australian and they're spending a lot of time at the beach looking at chicks with their assholes hanging out and stuff on surfboards. I have no idea. But they're $1,800 US brand new. These fucking dick-looking pieces of shit are selling it. $2,500 used, like with the Tolex fucked up and shit. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> At best, $1,400, $1,300, if it's banged up a little bit, even less, is what that amp is technically worth. You sound up $2,500 is probably the problem, okay? And I know a lot of people are like, well, it's opportunity meets necessity. Um... Necessity would be buying a line six for two hundred dollars. That's necessity. Because there ain't no other reason why someone would buy a line six other than they need an amp in a hurry. For whatever fucking reason. Because those amps fucking suck. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, you know, the price gouging's ridiculous. Like there's a couple things I've been hunting for and I, I giggle every time I find one. Like Case in point, the Lucifer pedal by KDHK or whatever the fucking KHDK, whatever. Kirk Hammett Company, anyway. Uh, the Lucifer pedal. I want it just because I've never tried one. Basically, just to try it. If I like it, it will stay in my collection. If I don't, I'll turn and burn it basically for what I pay for it, you know? Because it's used gear. If you don't bang it up, use gear when you get it, it's worth pretty much what it is when you get it. If you, you know, don't let someone gouge your ass for 450, 550. My favorite is the $666 mark. <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ. Come on, man. It is a $249 pedal used maybe 200 bucks. Okay. That's what it's actually worth. If it's in good condition and you got the box, anything less, take money away. You gouging pieces of shit. All right. So basically, at the end of the day, all this keeps happening. Not because people are selling it for that much money, but because people are dumb enough to fucking pay for it. If people are going to pay for it, it's never going to stop. So my advice would be to get gear back to the price it should be at. Find your patience button and smash that motherfucker. If not, we're going to keep having very expensive gear problems, all right? Serious. At some point, you have to stop. If you don't stop feeding the beast, the beast will always just be hungry. You know what I'm saying? And it takes something that's super affordable under normal circumstances and makes it extremely unaffordable under all circumstances. Think about that for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just put your thinky thinky on. Because, well, what's next? You know, we're having gear issues. What's next? Everything affects everything. If you don't believe that, then, well, you're a special breed of fucking... You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyhow, that's basically it. That's my little rant. Stop stop being part of the problem. Be part of the solution. And that's a two-sided thing. One, if you're selling gear, stop overpricing for gear. And if you're buying gear, and you're buying gear that's overpriced, stop doing it. Because if they can't sell it, they will drop the fucking price. It's how it works. In business, in life, in everything. If no one's buying and they truly want to get rid of it, the price will go down because they want money. All right? A lot of these people don't give a fuck about that gear. 
they don't ever plug into it. They get it like, I can make money. So they got the gear at the price it should sell. And then they immediately sell it for twice what they paid for it. it it's just a way to make money. Get it on the ground floor, buy it, and then sell it. Meanwhile, there's people like myself that want to try things because we're genuinely curious about what stuff does and they're pricing it. it. I'm stubborn. I am not overpaying for a piece of gear. Not happening. Okay? I know what gear is worth. I buy a shit ton of it. I sell a shit ton of it. I do not overcharge. Like this. Which I'll never get rid of because it's actually... Probably my favorite Fort mod so far. I got this for $229. If I was to sell it, if it's in this box where it's going to live, whatever, and it never leaves this box, it just sits up there on my shelf of hundreds of boxes, <laughs> I'd probably sell it for $200 shipped. All right? If I use it, it gets a little banged up, and of course you start taking money off. That's how it's supposed to work. All right? And nothing against Ibanez or Godlike or Fortin. It just happened to be this was sitting in front of me, so it was a good example. Not only that, for some reason, people go stupid for the Fortin shit, and then they fuck people when they want to get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's a damn easy punching bag. All right. Very cool. Keep music evil. Bring metal to the children. Don't be a dick. Stop overpaying for gear and stop overcharging. You're becoming a problem. All right? Very cool. Catch you in the next video. If you tune back in after being told you're fucking stupid, because you know everybody's guilty of that shit, right? <laughs> All right. Later, man. Catch you in the next video. Ciao.